Welcome back to the uh, Nutramedical Report live, and we have Harley Schlanger all the way from Austria there. Uh, Harley's often in the Houston or Los Angeles office for the LaRouche Foundation. And uh, I can tell you that um, the LaRouche Foundation has solutions. They deal with things squarely. Uh, we can go beyond labels that are often put on the LaRouche Foundation. I agree with the idea that government needs to set rules of the road so that a true republic, true credit happens, that rules of the road stop and put a firewall between uh, speculative banking and the real economy. Uh, what we have right now is insanity, and the current so-called uh, closet Muslim in the White House is destroying the country. His minions are working around him from Geithner to Bernanke and all the other characters he's trying to nominate, like Brennan. These people are right out of the pit of hell. And uh, we need to talk about the fact that uh, at some point Obama needs to be impeached badly. This man needs to be impeached, not have a full second term, but he needs to have it cut short. If not by impeachment now, in 2014, he needs to have the Senate completely taken over and politically he needs to be castrated. Because this is ridiculous what he's doing to this country from Obamacare, which is a form of eugenic care with a grab of power, uh, to the lack of action on the banking system, to continue to, in his announcing in his latest speech, just what he's going to do in the spending plans, which are patently insane. Uh, it just goes on and on uh, what Obama's up to and his uh, so called minions. Uh, Harley, let's start at the top of what uh, the key issues are with Obama. Well, I think you've, you've outlined a few of them. I, I would start with the following simple point, which is that our biggest handicap is that we have a president who's actually an agent of a foreign government, not even a foreign government, of a foreign power, namely a financial a group of financial institutions that have loyalty to no nation. The Wall Street City of London financial institutions put Obama in power. And they're basically running the administration. They're running his foreign and military policy through Tony Blair, exactly as they did Bush. And on economic policy, it's being run by errand boys like Geithner and Bernanke, who basically represent this financial interest. Now, here's the problem. In the past, we've had bad presidents who were traitors and or who did things that were injurious to the nation. And we always had people within the, the political system who stepped forward and either ordered them to get out, as in the case of, of Nixon, uh, or put up blockades to them and, and put forward a different course of policy. Now, what we see today is a Congress which is crippled by the worst partisan problem ever, which is Democrats who have no principles except they've got to keep Obama in office, and Republicans who have no principles except they want to impotently oppose Obama. And if either of these, if, if leaders of the two political parties were to recognize that the parties themselves are the problem, then we could easily deal with this, because we do have solutions. There are solutions. Now, the, 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 the two key things I want to talk about today, you brought, brought them both up. One is something that Neil Borofsky, who is the inspector general for TARP, called the Geithner Doctrine. Uh, it also could be called the Holder Doctrine, which is the, the administration's policy of not just bailing out the banks, but protecting them from any legal action. And then secondly, the insanity of accepting John Brennan as CIA director, when this is a man who lied in the hearings last week. He just lied, and nobody called him on it. No one gave him the tough questions. He's already admitted that Obama only received one phone call the night of Benghazi, September 11th, 2012, which, by the way, I think is, uh, this is the fifth month anniversary or so today of that event, and not a single person has been arrested. There's been uh, nothing done. To not even the motions. Not even a demotion of anybody. Exactly. All we have, the latest we have, is an angry tirade by a witch, otherwise known as Hitlery Rotten Clinton, uh, who actually tried to take the task of the committee and acted outraged at the fact that he even raised the question of whether or not there were just four guys out for a walk or decided to kill Americans. What the hell difference does it make, is her comments. Well, and what you saw with the House and, and, and uh, Senate Democrats and Republicans were essentially softball questions because they 
play the game of the administration and the media. And to win this fight, you have to go outside the parties, you have to go outside the environment created by Obama and the media, and you have to operate in the realm of truth. And right now, the, the good news I can tell you is that there's one institution of government where we're seeing some element of truthfulness emerge, and that's from the federal courts. In the ruling in Washington District Court, which overturned Obama's so-called recess appointments, and in some research I've done in the last weeks, I've come up with a couple of judges in the District Court of New York who are rejecting the plea agreements that are being reached. They're, they're called the uh, Deferred prosec Prosecutorial Agreements, which essentially allow banksters to uh, plead to negligence and get a fine, but there's no criminal proceeding against them. Uh, and, and this is called the Geithner Doctrine or the Holder Doctrine. So I think these two topics actually get at the point you made at the beginning, which is that Obama has to go because his administration is to protect the financial criminals and to work hand-in-hand -hand with international terrorists functioning on behalf of the supranational anti-sovereignty movement to destroy our own nation. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. In fact, he's a uh, demolition expert, should have a hard hat on, uh, because what he's doing is demolishing the banking system, energy security, and now I wanted to spend to the point where very basically America will go bankrupt, and this year or next we're going to have a bank holiday. And I see a devaluation of the currency, massive hyperinflation and a proceeding thereafter, uh, and that's going to eventually choke off the American middle class. If all of a sudden the middle class wakes up after a five or ten day bank holiday and everything is 40% more expensive, people aren't going to be able to buy put gas in their car or buy food. It's going to get insane. We're not talking about raising wages. We're talking about a situation where the government is going to lose control of the currency. Well, you know, if you think about Obama's uh, completely cynical proposal last night to raise the minimum wage, I mean, the minimum wage is not a living wage. But if you increase it, the small amount he's talking about, when you're confronting 10, 20, 50, 100 percent inflation, it's not going to do a darn thing for anybody. And, and this is really the problem. It's, it's, it's like uh, taking a water dropper on a forest fire. Well, and the, in fact, the idea is if you get enough people with an eyedropper, uh, they're going to get overwhelmed by the forest fire. Whereas if you get the person who sends them out with the eyedroppers and fire that guy and get a competent firefighter in there, you can deal with the forest fire. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's, it's but, amazing but to me. Instead, we're looking at these problems in the most narrow way. The, the, the Republicans and the Democrats are allowing Obama to shape all the issues. Uh, the I don't understand that. that. Why, why do the Republicans, are they that compromised? Do they have enough pictures of them in bed with someone underage? Are, what's wrong with the Republicans well, that they, they don't they just start impeachment? For, they may have that for some of them, but it's a problem of intellect. It's a problem of thinking. It's a problem of intention. They're well, intention I have a feeling that uh, when, when it comes down to May, when the conservative elements of the Republican Party and the Tea Party finally bolt, that Bonner is going to end up getting his walking papers. I can't see Bonner lasting much longer. And the, if you want to play the game Jenga, where you pull one stick out, there's a Jenga stick by the name of Bonner on it. And when that Jenga stick is pulled, probably about early uh, this summer or late fall, or late spring, that Jenga stick pulls out, Obama's done. Well, it has to happen quickly, that's for sure. Yeah, because Bonner basically, I consider now the actual obstruction to the party moving forward to start cutting the budget, doing real things that are going to solve this problem, change the industrial espionage with China in these trade zones, really build a real credit system here in America, and get things back on track. Welcome back, and Harley, let's continue on this analysis. Um, we see economic, uh, what I call the economic and currency war, World War III already started. Uh, we see the situation in the Middle East boiling 
uh, with Russian Navy sitting there, with the Syrians taking back territory that the so-called Syrian Free Army, which are basically foreign mercenaries sent from Saudi Arabia, Qatar, and the Arab Emirates. We see um, a situation where Obama continues to lie, the bankers continue to print money, uh, and uh, Rome burns. We literally have a a Nero-type figure. While Rome is burning, the middle class is literally teetering, and if we have a bank holiday, you can see us, uh, the estimates are that this could happen as early as April, but maybe as late as early summer. But we're probably going to have some kind of economic earthquake happen relatively soon. When that happens, it'll probably be a 40% devaluation of the dollar. That's what I'm hearing from my sources. Uh, that will kill the middle class. And no matter how much so-called wage increases in the basic wage that Obama plans, it'll be like putting an eyedropper on a forest fire. Obama is a blithering fool or an evil man, and I tend to believe number two. This man is evil. He's collaborating with globalist bankers who want America to be a territory on a global trade zone, not an independent sovereign country with independent energy policies, a true republic that protects the individual from the majority, not like any, quote, democracy, and uh, a country that basically is going to be cowed into doing globalist activities not activities for the best interests of Americans or anybody else in the world, uh, well, including no things like carbon tax and everything else. It's just disgusting what's going on, and Obama is begging to be begging to be impeached. Well, there's no question that Obama is an evil person. I don't think that he's ignorant. I don't think he's as smart as he thinks he is. Oh, yeah, he's uh, a he narcissistic, uh, average intelligent person that is absolutely believes in his narcissistic visions, that if you could only just grasp my vision of what America should be, everybody would live in nirvana. It is crazy. Well, and also, because he's had powerful forces clear the way for him, he thinks that it's his own... Uh, attributes or maybe God is shining down upon him that's why he's been able to do this but it's all been rigged it's it, everything's been put in place for him so you know let's put Obama aside for a minute the guy should go he's got to be impeached but let's look at what the real problem is uh, and you and I were talking about this on the break the two political parties have at their core intentions which are not to improve the nation or solve the problems facing the nation, but to win the next election. Everything exactly. they do, whether it's polling, whether it's putting together party machinery, raising money, putting out so-called programs, it's tailored specific to win certain, certain votes. For example, the Republicans are now convinced that Obama beat Romney because of the Hispanic vote. And while on paper, that definitely has an appearance of, of truth that the Hispanics did go heavily for Obama. The Republicans aren't going to win the Hispanics by putting up Republicans with bad policies. Right. So the, the question, uh, that's, that's to assume that Hispanics have no independent capability of critical judgment. Now, here's where we get to the real problem, and you were talking about this with the Boehner question. Why do Republicans tolerate him? Well, for the same reason Democrats tolerate Obama, because up to this point, they don't see a winning election strategy except through going along to get along. Now, what Lyndon LaRouche has always emphasized is that if you go along to get along, you ended up herded into the concentration camps. That you've got to step outside of the game of the media, of the political parties. Now, the quickest way to, what, what you're talking about is a bank holiday, is the bad kind of bank holiday. Uh, right. it's, it's, not, good it's not a holiday where you go picnicking, it's a holiday where your credit cards don't work, you can't buy groceries or gas. Yeah. If, whatever, if you do have cash, it's soon going to empty uh, out very quickly and people are going to panic when they realize after um, the bank holiday that their cash has been devalued by about 40%. That's what I see coming. Well, now, there's another kind of bank holiday, which is what Franklin Roosevelt did, where the banks were essentially put in the receivership, and Glass-Steagall was implemented. Now, the kind of bank That would be a good bank holiday, but I, but I think Obama's going to do the first one that I mentioned. Well, I yeah, don't see him as being a pro, pro-American middle class or citizenry. His attitude is, save the banks no matter what. But that's why, that's why we have to beat Obama, because here's what you could do. Let's just put the solution out there. If we adopted full Glass-Steagall, which is a 
three-page bill that Franklin Roosevelt got through in the first week he was president. What you would do immediately is there would be no more bailouts because all the money in the shadow banking system, that is investment banks, all the derivatives, all the mortgage-backed securities, somewhere in the range of $600 trillion to a quadrillion dollars of nominal value that are floating around on the books of banks, that would be pretty much wiped out because there would be no more guarantee that it would be backed by central banks. If Right now, uh, just as the, take, take the case of J.P. Morgan Chase, they have $76 trillion on their books and derivatives. Now, they don't have anything close to that in assets to cover it. Right. And, in fact, the whole U.S. economy is only 16 or so trillion dollars GDP, so the whole U.S. economy could be liquidated and it would not cover J.P. Morgan Chase's derivatives. Yeah, in fact, the actual debt that we are, have is not 17 trillion. It's actually, we have leverage debt of somewhere near two quadrillion dollars. That's right. Uh, which basically is equivalent to about 280 Earths in terms of yeah. total GDP of the entire planet, let alone the United States. So basically no it's impossible to ever, in eternity, to ever pay this debt. Yeah, ever. That's, that's exactly right. Now here's the problem. The people who are running the banking system know that. So what they're saying is that we have to keep people confident that these values are real by putting up some cash periodically so that if something looks like it's about to fall in value, we can always rescue it. You know, think about it this way. If you're holding a piece of paper that's based on, let's just say you were sold a mortgage-backed security by Citibank that was based on 10 mortgages, all of which failed, then the face value on that financial instrument would be zero. But the bank is allowed to keep it on its books at the face value that it was originally sold at. And then it's bought and sold and traded and used for, as collateral for leverage. If we had Glass-Steagall, that financial instrument would have to be written down to its market value, which would be almost nothing. Right, now, but the thing is they're doing buying mortgage-backed securities, and they're not releasing properties under the marketplace to artificially keep the price of homes up rather than let the price of homes drop but setting up a system where people can maintain the same equity they had when the house was a higher value. Instead of doing that, what they're doing is they're artificially playing with the market, creating uh, a buying debt instruments that basically have no value whatsoever to just prop up and the, the economy. And the Federal Reserve is buying those debt instruments now, $40 billion a month. Okay. Yeah, I know, it's craziness. And so instead of someone's house dropping, say, from five hundred to 200000 and maintaining, say, 100000 equity, what they're doing is they're maintaining this high price of the homes artificially against the market. It's, it's incredible. Welcome back to the uh, Nutra Medical Report. Um, let's continue, Harley. We have uh, lots of, you know, this is a dire time. I think people, we're not talking negatively. We always talk solutions. But the, really the time is getting really short. And as you said on the break, we're not just talking about a 40%. I'm being very conservative. We could be talking as much as 75% or more devaluation of the currency. We could be talking about basically a, a full cardiac arrest of the economy. We could be talking about hyperinflation that is so shocking that we have food lines and bread lines everywhere. It could be so shocking our military are literally stuck overseas without even the resources to get themselves back here properly. And I don't think people are, are prepared for that. They're not prepared for a lame duck president who basically is totally incompetent narcissist for a lame duck Congress that won't do their job to impeach him and move forward with economic policies that really set us back on an agenda where we have energy independence, have our banks in every state, a federal government that has a firewall between speculative banking, and then lead the world toward proper credit balance and write off this debt. You can't pay a debt that's going to hundreds of earths. You can't. You, can. and, you know, the problem that we're dealing with is really a form of denial. It's a classic psychological example of denial. 
because if you look at the period going into 2008, everyone was denying that it was a bubble. That the right. housing, there were, there were arguments. I, I was out in California much of that time, and you'd have someone who would come out and say, well, this could be a bubble, and then Greenspan and others would say, well, it's not a bubble. These are accurate valuations. Uh, the economy's great, and so these valuations are reflecting it. Now, Mr. LaRouche at the time was saying it's a bubble and it's going to pop. There were a handful of others who were saying that. But for the most part, people were diving into the bubble. So a bubble is always driven by denial and delusions. Now, the problem is that bubble popped in July 2007, and then uh, shortly after that, we had the Bear Stearns case, and then a year later, September 2008, we had Lehman Brothers, and then no one could deny that there had been a bubble that popped. Now we've had four years of a wrong policy called bailouts, and bailouts combined with budget cuts, austerity. Right, and what we're which, by the way, doesn't solve the problem, it compounds it. It actually contracts the mechanisms by which economy exactly. can grow. And as they exactly. found this out in Europe, is you actually, it's like compressing the carotid arteries on someone's neck and asking them to do a complex mathematical calculation. <laughs> With low blood flow to the brain, how the hell do you expect them to calculate the numbers? Well, and, and what's happened has been that we've seen a net decline of not just GDP, but a further net decline of productive of, of production. And so we actually are in a situation where there is a shortage of food for the 7 billion people on the planet. It, right. It's not just a question of distribution. There's a net shortage of food. We have a net shortage of resources needed to sustain a population. Now, that's when you talk about a catastrophe, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about the global effects of this delusion. Now, we have the president come on television and say that we're making progress, digging our way out of the collapse. That is a complete and total lie. And he's, no a, one he's delusional. No he's one he's an evil that. man. He's an evil, delusional man. And the reason is it's by design. This is not, by the way, just stupidity. He's fully comprehensive that they want to destroy America. This last week, China passed us in productive capacity. That's not reasonable. And we have 200 billion plus industrial espionage of American business and technology going to China, and yet we still tolerate it. We still allow them to get in here without tariffs. We still allow their industry and their scientists and their university students to do industrial espionage and hack into our computers and our businesses. Let's get to the, get to the point on Obama, because, yes, we, we both agree completely and have for years that Obama is the perfect example of a, a, some, an evil person is manipulated by his narcissism to do damage to his nation. Exactly. It is his nation. Now, why is it that Marco Rubio didn't start out his response yesterday, or Rand Paul, by saying the president just lied to you about everything he said about the economy? Now, had he done that, had one of the two of them done that, the population would have said, thank God, I, I thought that was the case. But in Instead, they start out accepting the premise of the president, which is that because we had a, quote, stabilization of the banks, we now are in a recovery. There is no recovery. The stock market has gone up based on the same kind of fraudulent bubble that drove it up in 2007 and 2008. So, so here's where the problem of delusion comes in. The people hear often enough that we're in a recovery that they start to believe it. They think, gee, I'm missing out. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. And this is where we see the, uh, I would say, the effects of the dumbing down of Americans uh, has, is what causes this kind of, of foolish political thinking. And it allows Obama to get away with what he's doing. Exactly. It's, a, it's, a, it's mind-boggling, isn't it? But you see, that's where... What we have to do, and this is something Mr. LaRouche has been doing with his webcast every Friday night, and, and I would encourage the listeners, every Friday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, go to LaRouchePack.com. Lyndon LaRouche gives about a 20-minute opening where he takes up some aspect of economic policy and discusses it through, and then takes questions that are elaborations on that. Now, 
what he's been trying to do, and, and I know this is what you do with your show, this is what I do with my efforts full time, we're trying to upgrade the intellectual capacity of the American people. And I exactly, which is very doable, by the way, and it doesn't take a lot of effort for them to, kind of, to confirm what we're saying is true. And then to, as I say, pray on it, own the truth, and then do something about it, whether it's contacting your congressman or senator to put in Glass-Steagall, where it's contacting the uh, your state uh, government mm -hmm. to start talking about doing state banks, where it's talking about real credit, building infrastructure, and things that are true environmentalism, such as NOAPA, and, uh, and get away from old nuclear technology and realize we need to have new nuclear technology because just even abiotic fuel, which we have plenty of, isn't going to solve the problem completely. And, and what you're talking about here is that there are solutions. There are solutions that have a base in historic advance of civilization. Every time mankind has advanced, it's been because he's gone to a platform of higher energy flux density. That is using science and technology to increase man's power to reduce raw materials to, to produce more pure alloys that are usable. You know, we've, we've proven this over and over in history. Now, the problem we run up against is that that kind of progress by nations threatens the power of global empires. And right now we're dealing with one global empire. It's the British or the Anglo-Saudi empire, which includes Wall Street which is out to stop not just technological advance, but it's out to stop even competent thinking. And that's why you put in someone like Obama to replace Bush and have Obama go more aggressive than Bush in things like the Patriot Act, warrantless wiretapping, uh, the use of drones. You know, Dick Cheney was on, I don't know if you saw this, he was on Charlie Rose again last night. Oh, and yeah. He said he totally supports what Obama's doing with drones. Yeah, of course. My. This is the policy. This was the Bush Cheney policy. Now it's the Obama Brennan policy. Yeah, I know. I call it the two compartments of the Snake Party. <laughs> well, you know, Compartment A, which is the Democrats, the, the progressive communists, and then we've got what we call the corporate fascists. Both of them I disagree with strongly. Both parties try to see if they can woo the uh, the center. Uh, and they really have no intentions of supporting the republic or the economic independence of America or energy independence. They want us to be tied as a vassal to global overlords. Even Obama takes orders from NATO and the United Nations. But, but you know, if you then present an alternative as we're doing, for example, Glass-Steagall, a simple bill separating right. commercial from investment banking, exactly. that in itself would end the bailouts, which I think about 80% of the population would face. It would end, the, uh, it would end up the banking cartel either. Yeah, it would completely end it. They were too big to fail. Yeah. Put up with it. Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report, and Harley, let's uh, continue. We've got some. Um, these are momentous times, and um, the obstacle I think to Glass Steagall is basically apathy. Uh, what needs to happen is the Tea Party and the Conservative Party, parts of the Republican Party, have to actually force the Republicans to finally say, "Mr. Bonner, not another damn cent for you and your so-called debt limit." And the speech, of course, that Obama gave, I don't know if you've heard it, it's supposed to be given today, talking about his spending plans. He thinks that America is an ATM and a blank check machine. It's craziness. And he's determined, even though it's not building up infrastructure, high-speed rail, or NAWAPA to equalize water distribution around the country, he's not doing anything for infrastructure, building up the ability for the wealth mechanism. What he's doing is guaranteeing that he's going to make America plunge into so much debt that we will become slaves to communist China, allowing transfer of technology such as Boeing Aerospace, trade zones inside the United States so the metastatic cancer of communist China can spread here. And literally making American military just a vassal of NATO and the United Nations, not for our interests, but the interest of globalists, which are in many cases directly opposed to our own personal interests as a nation. Well, as we're so. doing now, we're defending terrorists. We're organizing and arming terrorists in Libya 
Tunisia, Algeria. Well, this uh, is going to well, this used to blow up this whole uh, inquiry is now blowing up between uh, the approval of, of uh, Brennan uh, and the whole issue of Benghazi and the arming of terrorists. Uh, it's very obvious for anybody that investigates this that Obama has made even open admissions that they support al-Qaeda terrorists, which are our sworn blood enemies. Look, on our website, on the LaRoucheBack.com website, is a fact sheet which takes material from the public record and shows that the State Department knew that we armed people in Libya who were al-Qaeda operatives. The, the same thing uh, Obama is saying, we're not providing lethal weapons to the Syrian opposition. No, we're encouraging Saudi Arabia and Qatar and Turkey to do it. Right, as proxies. As Lavrov but, said, the, the Russian foreign minister, or, I'm sorry, the Russian UN ambassador, Vitaly Churkin, said the other day uh, to Susan Rice, which infuriated her, uh, don't tell us that you bear no responsibility for the deaths in Syria. Uh, why will you not tell Qatar to stop arming the terrorists? Because you've given them the mandate to provide the arms, which of course is true. Everyone knows that. So look on the, the Libya thing. It's it's simple. You want to stop Brennan? You you bring up the real Benghazi question, which is not what was Obama doing the night of Benghazi. It's why are we in an alliance with terrorists? And the reason McCain and Lindsey Graham and these other Republicans can't do that is because they were in favor of arming those terrorists to overthrow Gaddafi, and they're supporting the arming of terrorists in Syria to overthrow Assad. And so this is where you see the corruption and the stupidity and the immorality of Republicans that matches the evil of Obama. Right. In other words, uh, McCain's uh, 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 feigned anger uh, over uh, Susan Rice, who had no business speaking, is all a cover so they don't have to deal with the real Benghazi issues. Why are we allied with terrorists? Exactly. And by the way, they have made the statement, and this is public, that they are now going to take missiles that they obtain not only in Syria, but they have access to, and set up man pads in America five to seven miles away, as far away from U.S. airports, to take down airliners with ground air missiles while they're in flight, either taking off or landing. And people say, oh, that won't happen. I'm thinking, I was told this by my secure uh, special contacts that were high levels inside Delta Force as long ago as the mid-90s. And I can tell you right now, the government asked three questions when they listened to my show. They say, who's on Deagle's program, what questions are they asking, and how the hell do they know it? And I'm saying it publicly right now. Obama's opened up our U.S. Uh, Air Defense Command. He's shutting it down. He's going to make sure that if there's incoming medium, intermediate range missiles from Guatemala that are, that are Chinese or Venezuela, that if there's troop movements across the border from Mexico that are Chinese, that if there's armaments coming in in containers in Long Beach, California, arming not only gangs but terrorists, that if I moved across the border and say they're Pedro when actually they're Muslim and they're Hezbollah, and where we have terrorists that are Al-Qaeda, that are working with the Zeta cartels to bring across, as McAfee says, rice and uh, uh, chemical toxins that are universally fatal. I mean, people don't understand that Obama is leaving the door wide open for Americans to die by the millions. You know, this, the precedent for this was what we did in Afghanistan in the 1980s, where we worked with bin Laden and we worked with the Saudis, and then what we saw, the, we were providing those uh, surface-to-air missiles that were used to bring down the Soviet planes. Now, those missiles remained in the hands of what became the Taliban, and they've been using weapons. They've said they're going to use them on American airliners on American soil, and they say exactly. they're here now. So they're here right, right now, N-O-W, now. Now, here's the People. point. That's why John McCain... Uh, is someone who ought to ste step aside, and there ought to be someone in the Republican Party, maybe Senator Lee from Utah, or maybe uh, someone else will do it. But raise this question of why is Obama, with support from McCain and Lindsey Graham, and from the Democrats, why is he in an alliance with al-Qaeda? Now, if that question were asked, it would blow up the hearings. It would blow up the Brennan nomination. Right. Similarly... If 
someone were to ask in these Jack Lew hearings for Treasury Secretary, is it the policy of the United States to let all these banks off with civil fines when they've committed criminal offenses, not only against their shareholders, but against the whole nation? Is that the policy of the Justice Department and the Treasury? And if so, will you stop it? These are the kinds of questions that have to be posed in these hearings. If they're not, then the truth doesn't get out, except through what you're doing, what we're doing, through our website. And the point is the truth is powerful, but we really need some allies and positions of influence to do something about this. Yeah, and the problem is that we need Cong- we need people listening to call the congressman and senator and ask tough questions. You know, Absolutely, uh, and, and also... Glass-Steagall now has, I think, 12 or 14 co-sponsors. This is uh, H.R. 129. Now, there's another bill, a really important bill, Walter Jones's bill, the uh, congressman from North Carolina, that says if Obama provides any military support to the Syrian rebels, that becomes an impeachable offense. And that's uh, H.C.R. 3. And if you have yeah, a congressman who's not supporting him, you ought to be in his office on Monday. Right. Now, I have another issue that was brought up yesterday by Eternal Michael McConnelly of the U.S. Justice Foundation. And he found out that apparently because the Supreme Court found the Obamacare a tax, all spending bills have to originate in the House of Representatives, which means Obamacare is being pushed forward to the Supreme Court and will be appealed as basically null and void. And I believe that uh, you're going to see Obamacare become null and void. It's not health care bill at all. If you actually read the 3,000 pages which are now being analyzed, it mainly is a power grab with a eugenicare attached to it. And by the way, the eugenicare part was started with the bailout bill that Obama put in bef- a year before the Obamacare bill. And uh, what Obama's basically doing is dismantling liberty in America. Liberty in health care, liberty in credit. So many new regulations on business, a business can't possibly untangle well, themselves from the duct tape. Dodd-Frank bill. The Dodd-Frank bill is, is something like 1,800 pages, but if all the regulations are written, it will be over 30,000 pages. And meanwhile, it won't do the simple thing that has to be done, which is stop speculation by ending the government guarantee to speculative debts. Well, the thing is, why would the government guarantee a speculation, which is a casino debt, made by international bankers when they always know they're going to never lose? Well, because they the can speculate to win, but they'll never lose because the government's always going to bail them out. Well, and that's because they control the government. You know, people who don't like the government should realize your government is run by these global financial interests. It's not run by the people. It's not run by elected representatives. They are at the beck and call of this globalist financial elite. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, amazing. But they can be beaten because they're bankrupt. <clears throat> they are. And the fact is, we're not dealing with a giant, you know, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, Godzilla monster. We're dealing with a little tiny uh, thing that if the apathy of the population ended, the horror of Obama and the minions around him, like he wants to appoint a Brennan and other mo- idiots like Jack Lew, it will end. Uh, we will castrate these uh, communists within our midst. We will get rid of the elements within the Republican Party that support globalism and just big business and want to destroy the middle class. We'll deal with a balanced budget and real credit. We'll get back to what America is and stop being sucked dry and industrial espionage and compromised in every possible way. Visit... Um, LaRoucheBAC.com, LaRoucheBOB.com, Executive Intelligence Review.